mentioned before, being friends with the Macho Man Randy Savage. I know you had some great time hanging out with Macho. Oh yeah, right, and and, and even uh, post WCW, obviously. Yeah, and yeah. Being friends with him after that, and weren't you a part of the video as well? His uh, I, I was. I, I was yeah. doing the functional stuff that I started in HWA, which. Uh, you can actually Google that, and I got a great promo with Bill Barons as the Funkster, and it, it's awesome if you ever seen it. Oh uh, yeah! But uh, Macho Man, you know, it wasn't no secret. Macho Man didn't like Hogan back then. At that time, I mean, he did a CD, you know, be a man Hulk. He wanted to fight Hogan. He was wanting to give all the money to charity, but Hogan wouldn't agree to it. And you know, in Macho Man reality, would have beat the shit out of Hogan whether he likes it or not, because uh, Macho Man, you know, he was a hell of a shooter, man. You know. And everybody knew he would have whooped Hogan's ass, and Hogan knew it. That's why he didn't want no part of it. But, uh, yeah, man, I remember I was over in Japan wrestling in all Japan, wrestling with Kojima and Muda, uh, Kaz Hayashi, uh, Kea, and actually Jerry Toot was a wall. He actually died over there, but he was he actually got me over there and uh, had some great talent in all Japan pro wrestling, man. I love working over there. So I get back to my room. I check my messages every morning usually and because, uh, you know, when you're in Japan, you're 12 hours ahead of the States. So I always called my mom. I always check my messages. So I, I check my messages. Who's on my damn voicemail? Macho man. He's like, yeah, brother. Yeah. Give me a call. Yeah. I got some <laughs> something for you, brother. You know? And I'm like, I'm like, this is freaking ridiculous. Macho man calling my phone. You know, <laughs> I was fired up, man. So I, I didn't have his number. He didn't leave me his number, but I was good friends with Brian Adams and Brian Adams was always hanging out with him. So I called Brian and said, Hey, you with Macho man? He's like, yeah. So he put him on the phone. We're talking. He's like, brother, I need you to come to need you to come down to Tampa, brother. I got something for you. So, you know, Brian told him about the Funkster gimmick and this and that, and he loved it because anything that would make fun of, which I wasn't making fun of Hogan, but he wanted to make fun of Hogan through my right, character, right. which was fine yeah. with me because Hogan wasn't doing me any fucking favors. So, uh, yeah, Macho Man, dude, he had a he had a limousine waiting for me to pick me up the house, took me to the airport, you know, treated me like a damn king, bro. Macho Man was top notch. He'd always have limousines, chauffeurs waiting for me take me to hotel five-star hotels you know paying me really good money to do these videos and stuff with them and uh man I, he was just a great guy for the short time that i did know randy man he was he was unbelievable i love that your buddies with him he just calls you up and oh, hey brother you know hey, you oh know, dude he was amazing was, uh, yeah amazing i think i think you were telling me the last time when we did an interview Oh man, I'm trying to remember. It was like the funniest. Damn, Mac. I, when I mean, we bought the wig, but it was something with catering. It was something. Oh, okay. Of... I, I got two <laughs> stories for you. Okay, yeah. Man. These are unbelievable. <laughs> if anybody likes Macho Man, is going to love these yeah. stories. So you know, Macho Man. He's he is the Macho Man. Like there is no character. Uh, the right. Macho Man's is Mister Poffo when he's yeah, off the Randy, set. Yeah. You know, he's he, he's the Macho Man. Period. Bottom line. So, you know, we're hanging out. We, me, him, and Brian are changing upstairs at this little venue we're at. And uh, so we're shooting videos. They got all, they got hundreds of extras around here because they were the crowd behind the, the, when he's shooting the videos. So it looks like they had, you know, crowd and at his concerts. And then we had a ring set up where we did a shot where the crowd's all around the ring and I get in the ring and we do a spot and stuff like that. And he, and he kicks my ass because I'm the funkster and he wants to look like he's beating up Hogan. Well, I didn't have, I shaved my head, which, you know, I have a shaved head now. So, but I still had the mustache and I dyed my mustache and it was a perfect mustache. So he's like, well, we need to get you a wig. You got a wig? I said, no. He goes, he goes, brother, we're going to go shopping for a wig. Yeah. <laughs> so we get in the limousine, me, him, Brian Adams, get in the limousine, go to this wig shop. And it, it's, I mean, for me being a little Mark from Alliance, Ohio, you know, a guy that I used to watch, you know, all the time, every, you know, five days a week on TV when I was a kid, you know, I get to, I'm, now I'm going, I'm hanging out with him. I get to go shopping for a wig with him, which was amazing. Him and Brian Adams. So we get in this wig shop, dude, and he's walking around all gimmicked out. And you know, he's, he's got his pinky and he's looking at these wigs and he's like, boom, right there, try it on right there. That one right there, you know, and I'd put it on a, and the woman would give me a mirror and I'm looking at it. And he's like, He'd go, brother, take it off. Ain't, ain't the one. That's not the wig we're looking for, you know? And he he's just, he's all over the place, bro. And this chick's helping us. And she's just being as nice as she could be. But, you know, in the back of her mind, she's like, what in the hell is going on here? <laughs> and so we finally get to the wig, man. So I put this blonde wig on. And he's, you know, I'm looking in the mirror. And the lady's kind of puffing it up. You know, she's, tank, you know, untangling it, whatever, and combing it with this wig comb. <laughs> and the macho man's like, he's like, 
you brother boom right there that's the one boom we'll take it right there you you know so I'm, he's like walk around with it so I'm, I'm walking around with it and he's like yeah like, like it from the back you know and he's just he's like yeah boom right there so he goes up the cash register and him and brian pay for it and so we we get back to the arena well all these extras ate everything in catering i mean there wasn't shit left and there was tons of food in there so so Magic man's kind of pissed off about it so we go up to the locker room and uh, you know we're getting dressed or whatever and uh, <laughs> so he comes down he he gets me and i Brian Adams, I think, was on the phone at this point. So he's over there. He's like, he goes, brother, come here. And he's like, come over here, brother. So I'm, uh, and he's like sneaking. He's on like his tiptoes. And he's like, <laughs> we're walking down the stairs. And I'm like laughing. I'm like, what's going on, man? He's like, he goes, brother, you got to see this. You got to come with me, brother. So we get, he opens up this door and he like, slant, he, the door flies open. He's like, boom. He's like, brother, right there. You yeah, look at him. And I look over there and I see a tray with sandwiches on it. And he and he looks around. And he goes, yeah, K Fabe sandwiches, brother. <laughs> boom, right there, K Fabe sandwiches. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm popping huge because I'm like, this is amazing. Macho man sitting here telling me K Fabe sandwiches. He's like, yeah, brother, these are our sandwiches. Don't let nobody else get them at all. K Fabe sandwiches, brother. You know, and I'm 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 popping obviously because it I it. To me, it was it was one of the greatest moments of my wrestling career watching this guy do that stuff. You know, yeah, that's awesome. And being friends with him and hanging out with him and literally living the life of the Macho Man. Oh, awesome. dude, he every time we'd go by somebody, the owner of that Big Three Records was was the record label that he was on, right? And they had some big names, but uh, whenever Macho Man, <clears throat> whenever he went somewhere, he was the main draw. Like I, they had a band, like a, a real popular band. I want to say like Three Doors Down or. Or, or a band similar to that. So you're thinking you're at a music, you know, I don't really want to say a convention, but almost like a fair type thing, but they had like all these musical acts. So they had a tent set up and here's a macho man. He's a wrestler. He's really not a musician, but he, in his mind, I'll tell you what, he, he thought he was the biggest music m- musician there, not just star. And it showed because that's just how he was. So he had more people in his tent than any 15 bands that were actual bands and people actually knew. Nobody was at these guys' tent. There was a million people lined up for Macho Man and nobody could give two shits about any other band that was in this place. And uh, so I remember the owner of the Big Three Records walked up to us and Macho Man's like, brother, cut a promo on this guy right now. And I'm like, cut a promo. He's like, do it right now. Boom. Cut the promo. So I'm just, I'm, you know, like say his name was John. I'm like, well, let me tell you something, John, I'm going to run all over, you know, I just cut a promo off the top of my head and Macho Man sitting back there, dude, he's got the biggest smile on his face. And after I get done, he's like, boom, right there. What I tell you, this guy's amazing. Boom. Right there. He (laughs) He put me over like I was a million dollars. And it it was just the funnest thing just to be around that guy. Cause you never knew what he was going to do, you know, but he always, he'd always make you feel like, you know, he always made you feel like you were the superstar and he was just somebody just hanging out with you. You know, that, that's what I loved about that guy. He just, he, he was just a good dude, man. And he always made you, he made you feel like you were, you know, the, the star around him. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. He's, you know, the macho man, he's doing the hand stuff. He's doing the finger with the pink. Oh uh, dude. He, and the point. He, and that the, was yeah. him 24 seven. As far as I, that, that was the macho man I knew. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.